Okay, it says review for quiz three up on classroom. If you want to take notes, fine on it. If you don't, that's fine too. I just want to make sure everyone has it access to what I'm talking about. A reminder, nothing from quiz two, none of those circle facts from quiz two will be on quiz three. It's quiz three starts on uh, day 11. All right, day 11. That's when uh, we start, which was measures of chords. All right, so day 11 is when quiz three will start. All right, first theorem I'm going to have here. Uh, if you are taking notes, go ahead, graph a center for me, please. Put a center in that first circle in the top left corner if you are taking notes. And draw me two chords that intersect each other, A, B, and C, D. Draw two chords that intersect A, B, and C, D that intersect at E if you're taking notes. All right, chord A, B, and C, D should be intersecting at point E. What's the fact? And I'm not talking floater angles. Remember, that was quiz two. I'm talking about lengths of chords. So if I wanted to find chord A, part of chord, if I wanted to find AE, if I wanted to find CE, all right, what's the theorem with chords that intersect? You can either give use it, tell me using the letters I gave you, or just in your own words. I don't care. All right, and if you forgot, I'm going to have you look back in your packet. And okay, so here's the first uh, theorem for tomorrow. So two chords intersect. Their lengths. Tell me about their lengths. All right, what's the fact about their lengths here? Start us off here. Here we go, Henry. It was day 11 if we're looking at our packet. Okay, so give me two segments up here on my diagram that I should be multiplying together. Okay, here we go. Everyone ready? Part times part equals part times part. So I take one chord. It's broken up into two pieces, AE and EB. I multiply those two. Then I set it equal to the other chord, which is broken up into two pieces, CE and ED, which both get multiplied together. Oh, there it is with chords. There it is with chords. Okay, two chords intersecting. The parts multiplied together are equal. Uh, it's not on, I didn't put it on the review, but I just want to make sure we're good here. Just a heads up, take a look up here. What this theorem can also work for, a diameter is a chord, correct? We've said that all unit, a diameter is a chord. So I just want to make sure that you guys realize that it also works. Let's say I had this instead. also works for this diagram. These are two chords, right? One's a one's a, one we call a diameter, but it's still a chord. So I could still say CE times ED, these two parts equal, now go to the diameter. The diameter is broken up into two parts, EB on the bottom here. All right, EB, and be careful here. You don't stop at the center. You don't stop at the center. So I'm going to put EB, this part, times EA. All right, not EO. We go all the way through the other part. So that one, this theorem here, also works for a diameter in a chord. Okay, also works for a diameter in a chord. Any questions on that fact? Okay, second fact involves secants and tangents. How to find the lengths of secants and tangents. So let me put a secant in first, and then we'll combine it with a tangent in this case. So I'll call this secant ABC, and I'll call this tangent CD.
What's the using letters or the, tell me the expression we use? Secants and tangents. How do I find their lengths? Because it's not piece times piece anymore. So either using my letters or the expression we used, tangents and secants. What do you have for me? Tangents and secants. Alyssa? Probably would have been, let's see, that was 11, so this probably would have been day 12. Okay. All right, got to watch the videos here, guys. Got to watch the videos here. Uh, Cormac. Whole times external equals whole times external. All right, so whole secant, CA, times its external part, CB, equals over here, CD times CD. When you talk about a tangent, whole times external is the same, right? When we talk about a tangent, the whole times external part are both the same length. If I draw in two secants, same thing, whole times external. All right, if I draw in two secants, same exact thing is happening. Any questions? I know this has been a couple minutes already, but that's just two facts. That's it. And last one here. In this last circle here, bottom left. Go ahead, draw in your center for me in that circle. Draw in your center if you're taking notes. And then give me two chords that are parallel. A, B, parallel to chord C, D. Give me two chords. They don't have to be the same length. I don't care how long they are. But give me two chords, A, B, and C, D, that are parallel. And make sure you put uh, the arrows on that show me they're parallel. Two chords are parallel. What's true? Parallel chords imply what's true up here. Two chords are parallel. And I can tell you the chords aren't congruent. That's out of there. Chords aren't congruent. They're parallel. So if the chords are parallel, what else do I have is true up here? Brendan? Um, isn't it like something with the arcs? It is something with the arcs, yeah. It is something with the arcs. What's that? Are the arcs like congruent? Okay, which arcs? Oh, there's, I got four up here. Only two are congruent to each other, though. BD and AC. What is it? BD, AC. B, D, and A, C. If the chords are parallel, the arcs in between are congruent. Okay, let me say it again. If the chords are parallel, arcs in between, A, C, and B, D are congruent. Parallel chords imply congruent arcs. Chords are parallel, the arcs in between are congruent. Any questions? Those are it for the facts. That's it. Three. This is tame compared to that circle quiz too, huh? This is pretty tame. But you got to know it. All right, some other stuff uh, to be aware of. There's going to be one construction. One of, we did four on Friday. Uh, all right, so let me go around here to four people. What could it be? What are the circle constructions we've already covered? Circle construction. We just did them on Friday. We just did them on Friday. Jonathan, one of uh, the four we did. Sorry, I couldn't hear. Hexagon? Yep, hexagon. Do a hexagon for me. Good. Inscribe a hexagon. I give you a circle in the center. There you go. Give me a hexagon. Four congruent arcs means four, six congruent arcs means six congruent chords. All right, what else could I ask you to construct? Something else here. Stella? Square. Square inside, got it. I could also do an inside square, which means draw your diameter and bisect it. Draw your diameter and bisect it. Another one we could have you do. There we go, Drew. Equilateral triangle, yep. 
and I'll stop right here. I'm just going to circle and pair these two together because they're the same construction, right? Make six congruent arcs, but connect every other one for the equilateral triangle. All right, so those are the three polygons I could ask. And then there was a fourth one that we did, which is not a shape. And that would be, Vinny? Yep, construct the tangent. Do that extended radius and a perpendicular line. One of them's on there, one of them. No, you know, there's not, just pretty basic. Do one of these four. Well, rewatch the video from Friday or go on Classroom. You guys know there's a YouTube video that we've made that has every single uh, construction, including these four. So you have two options to review those. And that's why you guys have your compass. I've got compass and straight edges out if you guys want to practice those. I'm not giving you practice. Here's how you, by the way, here's how you practice uh, one of these four. You draw yourself one of those. You put let's go, one of these in there, the center, and then you say, which one do I want to do? That's how you practice. Okay, I don't need to give you like eight on a sheet of paper, like eight different constructions. That's how you practice. Draw yourself a circle, put your center in, and be like, all right, I'm doing a square. Go. All right, I'm doing an equilateral triangle. Go. If you do a tangent, make sure you give yourself an extra point to draw the tangent through. All right, but that's how you practice. Grab a sheet of paper, draw a circle, put a center, and decide which one of the four you're going to practice. Okay? Uh, circle equation. Here we go. X minus H squared plus Y minus K squared equals R squared. You'll see three numbers plugged in, right? You'll see three numbers plugged into this or, or you have to plug three numbers in. Let's talk about those three numbers. The first two numbers are going to go in for H and K. And that represents what of this circle, those numbers you plug in or get from H and K. That tells you the what of the circle, Stephanie. So there'll be a number here like three and eight. And that tells me what? Day 12, if you got to look back, H and K. All right. I think we're finding something out here today, guys, huh? I think we're finding something out. Cormac, that's the center of the circle. All right, that's my center. And there will be a number plugged in here for R squared. We don't care. Well, we do care about that number, but I'm going to be looking for R. And R represents Simon? Radius, Radius length, yep. Radius length. So those are the three values. H and K are the first two, which is your center, and then R is your radius length. And then just a couple notes here. Uh, I am going to ask you to factor tomorrow. Uh, I say use quadratic formula. What I ask you to factor can be factored. Like you can find two numbers that multiply to this and add to this. You'll be able to do that. Some of you might feel uncomfortable about your factoring ability, so you can use quadratic formula instead. All right, but what I give you tomorrow, you will be able to factor, guarantee. We're going to go over an example in a minute, but be ready to complete the square because I'll give you a circle that looks does not look like this. You need to put it in this form, and the only, form, only way you can do it is by completing the square. We'll go over that in a minute. And because I'm not here after school today, there's an extra review up on Delta Math after you get done uh, with the packet. Okay, after you get done with the packet. All right, anything on the review here before we go into a completing the square problem? 
Okay, go to your packet for me and we're gonna do question, what number is that? Question 10. Question 10. Okay, I'm looking for the center and the radius, but it's not in the form we want, h minus k. No, it's not in that form, h and k with r squared, so we gotta put it into that form. The way we put it into that form is by completing the square. All right, so everyone that was here, I guess, uh, let's, because uh, this is a hot mess, what I gave you up here. All right, I gave you the worst problem I could find. Uh, that is not even close to where we need to start. Uh, what do I need to do first before we complete any anything? Bryson, what do I need to do up there? Um, put the X's with the, like. Yeah, go ahead. You have to like put, so you have to get AX next to X squared. Yep. And 6Y next to it. Okay, we got to get X's together, Y's together. Single number got to stay on the other side. All right, single number has to stay on the other side. So X squared, bring over the 8X. So it should be right next to minus 8x. y squared, bring that 6y over, add it, and then keep that 39 right where it is because the single number should be on the other side. So make sure everything is grouped together first before we do any calculations. All right, next up, you got to find that new number you add to x's and y's. And you could, I could have done this in the first step, but one, one thing at a time here today. All right, what do I add to the x's? And what do I add to the y's? All right, let's review. How do I find that number I add to each of them? And they always should be positive. Notice I put a plus sign automatically. Always positive. Always positive. All right, procedure to find those new numbers I'm adding. What should I do here? Henry, remember how to do that? Yep. Yep. So I take the B value, in this case, negative 8, cut it in half, then square that number. Okay, cut it in half, then square that number. So negative 4 squared, boom, I should have a 16 written there. Half that value squared, and then do the same thing on the Ys. Take half a 6 and square it. Should have a 9 written there. And here's the biggest mistake. You think you're done, but you unbalanced. You made the equation unbalanced, didn't you? So I got to add 16 and 9 to the other side. Keep the equation balanced. So on this right side, I should end up with 64. And now I factor the left side. First, x squared minus 8x plus 16. Two numbers that uh, add to 16 and multiply to 16 and add to negative 8. And remember, they should be the same numbers when you're completing the square. Should be the same numbers I'm looking for here. Multiply to 16 and add to negative 8. What are those two numbers that get the job done? Brendan? Uh, negative 4 and negative 4. Rewrite it as x minus 4 squared. Yep. Plus, do the same thing for the y's. Two numbers that multiply to 9, which should be the same, and add to 6. Bailey? 3 and 3. 3 and 3. So I rewrite it as y plus 3 squared. Yes, good. And remember, I did show you guys a trick. You don't have to factor. You can just cut those b values in half, and that's where, what they are. Cut the b values in half. Good, we got to this point. Now it's in the form we want. Now I gotta find the center first. All right, be careful. What's the center looking at this equation? The center of my circle looking at this equation. Tess? Uh, four, negative three. Four, negative three. All you guys gotta do is take the opposite out. Perfect. Better watch it here. I caught somebody last period. What's the radius length? Caught somebody last period. Be careful. Henry? 
eight, not 64. Because remember, the formula says that number is r squared. We're looking for r. So take the square root, and that's why it's eight. Choice four. All right. I think it's pretty safe to say after today's review that we got a lot of work to do right now. And that's what you have for the rest of the period. You can work with other people. You can move around. doesn't bother me, but as long as it's on this, you got your packet. All right. Answer key. Sorry, Lexi. Answer key is on page 63. If you get done with the packet, I got you guys have compasses and straight edge. You can practice your constructions or go to Delta Math. All right. So plenty to do between now and the end of the period, whether you're working by yourself or with other people in the class. Let's get rolling.